Welcome back inside the AWC here at Centennial College. It's part two of our basketball doubleheader between the Centennial Colts and the visiting Algonquin Wolves. It was the Algonquin women's team picking up a rather handy victory in the first window. Once again, Zachary Freeman joined alongside Kira Irison as the men's game is just about a minute out from the starting lineups presentation. And Kira, last time these two teams squared off, Centennial ran the table. Yeah, Centennial didn't have much of an issue against Algonquin. We know last year, late October, 110-62 to for the Colts on away court. So we're looking for exciting gameplay. Talking to Coach Jackman ahead of the game, he did mention that during this game, his main focus is to try and play as hard as they do with top teams as they do with low teams. We know that they're coming back from a loss against Durham, a really close one, 81 to 71 last week. So we're trying to come back from those negative energies today, Zach. But again, some, aga some exciting gameplay. And right now we're going into O Canada and starting lineups. Yeah, it'll be the starting lineups with the PA announcer, Jack Middleton. So the starting lineups have been set once again for the Centennial Colts. Omar Nur, who usually starts at that center spot, takes a seat today as this is a very small group from Algonquin. Just one player taller than 6'4 on the roster, that being Hunter Holbein. So taking his stead today will be Xander Wilson, who's provided good minutes throughout the season. He will be with Malik Taylor-Williams, DeAndre Goldburn, Hussam Shallow, and Tavon Mars-Buckley. And for the visiting Wolves, it's going to be Simon Desta, one of the top players in the OCAA, averaging around 16 points per game, as the jump ball is going to be won by Riley Partington, who had a bit of a mismatch height-wise. And we're underway now as at the top of the key, this is Desta, guarded by Wilson. Desta, step back three to start, and that one goes down. Bit of confidence yeah. right out the gate. Yeah, Desta 16th overall for those three-pointers, so make sure we heavily guard him. Goldborn over to Shallow. And Goldborn with it on the far side. His foot comes down on that black line, and ball will go the other way. Turnover on the first possession for the Colts. Bringing up the ball, C.J. Galaza, who in the last meeting had 12 points, six rebounds, and five assists. As in the corner, that one was there for Carter Normand, but it went right through his hands. Centennial basketball. 3-0 early lead for the Wolves. Algonquin coming out in a 3-2 zone. As driving baseline now, Goldborn. Inside, trying to find Wilson. That one deflected. Wilson able to come up with it over the top. Blocked from behind by Partington. Partington 
Just 10 games on the season, starting only two of them, draws the start against the third ranked Centennial Colts. And that's gonna be a five second violation call on the Colts, so a couple quick turnovers here for Centennial. As bringing up the ball, Galaza. Guarded by Goldborn. And works it inside, but that one just a little too front, far in front of Kendall Valerie. So another turnover. 8.53 left to go, still just 3 nothing for Algonquin. Mars Buckley. Back door, Goldborn wide open, they get it to him. Now has to kick it back out and that one well away, but Mars Buckley doesn't hustle back and able to get it easily was Carter Norman and on the follow was Galaza, but Mars Buckley putting his head down, not expecting anyone to go after it, gives up two points there. Goldborn behind the back. This 3-2 defense pressing on the perimeter, shallow, inside, dishes it off to Malik Taylor-Williams, and he gets the first bucket, comes up hobbling. Galaza, inside, kicks it out. Partington, Norman, three, good! Algonquin with two quick triples, and they've got a six point lead. Similarly to how the women's game was a bit of a trap game for the Algonquin team, similarly here for the men. Yeah, Zach, but just on three-pointers alone, when it comes to Algonquin, they're 33.7% successful which is pretty on point average when it comes to the Colts so trying to make sure that we have that strong defense will be the main target today. Mars Buckley from the corner bounces up and in. Tavon Mars Buckley getting the shooter's roll and Centennial brings it to within three still early in the first. Desta Skips it over to Norman. Back to Desta, working on Goldborn. Spins away, baseline, bank shot, no good. Rebound shallow. Mars Buckley going up and laying it in for two. Partington the other way now for the Wolves, as that's Norman. And he's fouled from behind on the reach by Shallow. So with 14 seconds on the shot clock, we'll have our first personal foul of the game. It goes against Hussam Shallow of the Colts. And we're gonna have our second foul, that one on Taylor Williams. Just getting a little aggressive on Valerie on the inbounds. as we get 14 seconds set on the shot clock. For the Colts in their last time out, it was a pretty good game on their part, but they did end up losing by 11. Or correction, 10 points to the Durham Lords, and it all came down to that third quarter where they were outscored 30 to 10. Yeah, Coach Jackman was talking about how it all came down to just withstanding those runs and having that good mentality so making sure this game, even though Algonquin really isn't a struggle for the Colts, keeping that mentality nice. Mars Buckley with the nice up and under off the no-look feed from Taylor Williams in Centennial has their first lead in the ball game as that one slips through the hand of Valerie, but he is able to come up with it. In the corner, Galaza. Driving left, kicking out, Valerie for three. That one no good, long rebound. That one poked out, taken by Galaza. CJ Galaza going inside, trying the floater. That one disrupted by Xander Wilson, and Shallow will take it the other way. Now to Wilson, inside, contact, no foul, but he gets it to go. Desta the other way. Norman inside for Valerie, and taking a hack at him was Malik Taylor-Williams. 
And Valerie gets the bucket to go. And with two fouls, Taylor Williams will have to take an early seat with 5.34 left to go in the first. And checking in will be Abdullah Sidani. In their last game, the Colts, disastrous shooting performance. 28% from the field, 21 from three as they allow the offensive rebound off the missed free throw. As in the corner, Norman's gonna take a three and hit it. So the Algonquin Wolves feeling the three early. 13-11 they lead as Goldborn brings it back, trying to find a hole in this zone. Skips it over to Shallow. Wilson posting up, bodying down, getting inside. Lost the handle, last touched by Wilson, and Algonquin gets the ball back. As our first substitution is coming for Algonquin, at the table now is Mateo Mongru. As Desta gets Goldborn airborne, and he gets the bank shot to go. Mars Buckley. Not a lot of off the ball movement early from Centennial as Goldborn takes a foul line jumper, no good. Rebound was tipped out by Sudani into the hands of Shallow. And Shallow gets it right back. Inside, floater, goes down and the foul. Hussam Shallow kind of looks like he lost his footing a little bit heading to the basket, but good body control. Gets it up and on the way down, he's hit. Goes to the line for a chance at a three-point play. Hussam Shallow had a good show out on the 20th against the Lords. Dropped 11 points, four assists and two steals. So keeping that energy up this game, we'll see if he can Try and close this two point gap, 15 to 13 with 4.22 left on this clock. Shallow's free throw goes down. So now it's a 15 14 Algonquin lead as Galaza gets to work. Drives left, wide open in the corner. Partington blocked by Goldborn! DeAndre Goldborn flying in from the top of the three-point line. Strong closeout for the rejection. Norman gets Goldborn to jump that time. It skipped out Galaza. Nice extra pass for Partington, but a travel called. Turnover for the Wolves, and Centennial will take it the other way. Shallow over to Goldborn. Right back to Shallow for three. Almost looked good as it got a clean swish, but it was just a little short on the air ball. And Shallow gets it right back with eight seconds on the shot clock. Foul called. And Shallow is going to go to the line for two free throws. Foul's going to be on Galaza, and it's not free throws. It's going to be side out of bounds with a fresh 14. As Shallow will take it to the far side. Thought about the long three. Chose not to go for it. Now dishes it off to Mars Buckley, who goes to work with the floater from the foul line. Good. Colts regain the lead as Galaza comes back the other way for Algonquin. Sudani tried to get the reach and an illegal screen called. Turnover going the other way as Simon Desta caught a little body on the moving screen. Centennial basketball and Trevor Costello, head coach of the Algonquin Wolves, not pleased with the call. Costello in his 27th year with the Algonquin program. Three twenty and counting. Left to go. 
in the opening quarter of the second half of our basketball doubleheader on ColtsNet Live. Mars Buckley had the three, chose not to go for it. It's back to Goldborn. Swung back to Mars Buckley, fakes the pass, pulls up for three, no good. Long rebound secured by Shallow. Inside, Wilson gets his man to jump. Foul called. And Xander Wilson's going to go to the line for a pair of free throws. Xander Wilson, a good rookie attribute for the Colts, has been having an amazing season, filling in the gaps when Nur isn't present. So far this season alone, he is placed 13, averaging about 7.1 rebounds per game with that height. So again, doing wonders for the Colts this season. First free throw goes down for Wilson. Jansen Balmacita checks in for the first time from the Algonquin Wolves in for CJ Galaza as a lane violation is going to be called on the Wolves. So another free throw coming for Wilson who will have a chance to pick up two as Illinois Roberts Farkuson steps up to the table. And he's going to check in for the shooter, Wilson. Colts coming out with their full court press as Detza able to dribble through it into the corner. Ball Masita, no good. Rebound Goldborn, and now he's off to the races. He loses the handle, but it's gone by Farkuson, who spins into Ball Masita. But Ball Masita draws the charge. So on the offensive foul, it's going to go the other way. Centennial up three, 237 left to go, first quarter. Yeah, Zach, looks like on that last play, Jackman is just trying to talk to Farkinson on just the technique and making sure not to get those offensive fouls, especially uh, when it doesn't seem as though they thought Algonquin would keep up or be as much as a struggle as they are today on this court. Norman in the corner for Mongrew. Back up to Detza. Going for that step back three again. Chose not to take it. Tipped by Marles Buckley. Ball Masita down low for Partington. Just gets it off before the shot clock expires. And the ball's advanced down to Sudani. Driving inside. Easy layup. Abdullah Sudani on the nice outlet feed from Shallow. Partington advances it for Norman. Back inside, stolen by Shallow, advancing it for Mars Buckley. And with the left hand, Circus shot! Doesn't bounce in. But two Wolves going for the rebound. Tip it out of bounds, so the ball will remain with the Colts as Malik Gibbs will see his first action with Goldborn taking a seat. Gibbs will use the safety valve of Mars Buckley. And Tavon will get it right back. Shaking and baking out to shallow. The three, no good. Mars Buckley gets the miss. It's Gibbs. Inside. Thought about the pass. Turns around. The circus shot is good for Malik Gibbs. The Colts with their biggest lead of the afternoon at five points with Norman backing down shallow, fading away over two guys. Great pass inside, Mongru and the foul. Yeah, on that last play, I don't know if you caught it there, but Partington almost gave a little notion there for a little inside play to be noticed. So that was a good eye from the Wolves. And checking in. Now out of New Jersey is Gazim Peter Jokai. As the free throw is good, converts the three point play as we enter the last minute of the first quarter. Mars Buckley's floater, no good. Peter Jokai with the rebound. Norman. Desta inside, out to Balmacita. No good on the three, trying to get the tip was Mongru. Rebound Sudani, and Shallow with it in the corner. 
And he gets it right back from Mars Buckley. Sudani inside, and that's going to be a travel as shuffling his way inside was Abdullah Sudani. So 36 seconds left to go here in the first quarter. Wolves are in the bonus. Should Centennial foul. As checking back in, Valerie inside for Peter Jokai in the corner. Norman pulls the quick trigger. And that one no good. The rebound tipped around as Valerie secures it for a fresh 14. Mars Buckley trying to go for the seal. Five second differential. Game clock, shot clock is Desta. Using the Valerie screen, stepping back, gets two men to jump inside. Valerie sent away by Sudani. Abdullah Sudani reading that one all the way. And with one second on the shot clock, the Wolves will try to get a quick look as for some shooting. Hardington checks back in, as does Galaza, to be the passer. And he gets it quickly, and Desta does not get it off on time. So shot clock violation, and Coach Costello not happy. Desta was not aware of the clock situation. And checking right back in are Peter Jokai, as well as Valerie. So 4.8, shallow. Advances quickly to Mars Buckley, wide open for three, no good. And Roberts Ferguson was late on the putback there. So after one quarter, Algonquin, bit of a surprise for Centennial early on, especially that early barrage of threes. Centennial leads by two at the end of one. Yes, things are actually looking pretty evenly matched, even though so far, the Colts have been the ones that have been standing out. In this game alone, three of eight threes for the Wolves compared to the one of five attempts the Colts tried to get, as well as just overall shots. Colts aren't really ahead that much, 50% compared to the Wolves, 44. So right now, Jackman's probably talking to the boys about what he told me before the game, you know, making sure those standards are as high as they are when they play higher teams such as Georgian. So overall, Colts are doing an amazing job on keeping this lead, but Zach making sure that they give the same energy they do to harder teams will be the challenge. Tavon Mars Buckley leading all scores with nine points in the first quarter. He's shooting 50% and he does have the sole three-pointer. The difference in this game being the points off of turnovers with a two-point lead. Centennial is plus four in the category. So we'll see how aggressive this Centennial defense can get. The Algonquin Wolves on the season pretty good taking care of the basketball. Just 16 and a half turnovers per game. However, on the defensive side, not too good at forcing them as teams usually only turn the ball over 14 times a game. So as we exit the break, it's gonna be Centennial basketball as they lead 22 to 20. The unit on the floor, Sudani, the sole forward as it's four guards right now with Shallow, Gibbs, Roberts, Farkusen, and Tavon Mars Buckley. A notable, per a notable player who Appears to be inactive today is Samuel Wong. Last time the Colts and Wolves squared off, Wong had 31 points and nine assists. Missing that influx of scoring and perimeter shooting as Shallow has it now and Gibbs thought about the three driving inside, steps through, floater, that one goes down. Malik Gibbs with the first points of the second quarter. And that's going to be called a blocking foul by Roberts Farkusen as he gets in front of Desta trying to break the press. So it'll be an inbounds here for the Wolves.
Desta pulling the three. No good. Rebound secured by Roberts Farkison. In transition, Mars Buckley driving baseline with the right. No good. Rebound Roberts Farkison puts it up and in. 26 to 20. Colts lead. The double team there. Partington, he's got open options instead. Chooses to go on Gibbs. And a late foul called on Malik. So Partington's going to go to the line for two shots. And checking in is going to be Jordan Karp. So a very small lineup on the floor for the Colts. That's going to get a little bit bigger as DeAndre Goldborn returns. And he checks in for Roberts Farkison. Goldborn, the tallest player on the court for both sides right now at six foot six. First free throw, good from Partington. Partington on the season, a 67% free throw shooter. Second free throw, good from Partington. And just about a minute into the second quarter, Colts lead by four. Mars Buckley, shallow. Back up top for Gibbs. Inside, kicks out. Mars Buckley over to Carp. Inside, out to Gibbs. Five seconds on the shot clock. Pulls the three. Good. Malik Gibbs with the triple. And Centennial extends the lead to seven. Gibbs having a good turnout so far. Seven points to his name. In the corner, Norman. Contested three-pointer. Tough shot, gets it to go. So Normand on the response, Centennial back on offense, and it's DeAndre Goldborn who kicks it over to Shallow. On the far side, he finds Gibbs, fading away. That one short off the front rim. And Galaza with the spin advances it. Algonquin will set their offense. Looks like a bit of an ISO look, but now a triple screen here. And Galazzo was able to get free, as now it's Normand. Has that one stripped away by Gibbs. Shallow the other way, and gets that one to go. He was hacked at by Galazza, and they're gonna have to rush in transition as it's four on two, and there was a bit of a carry. That was uncalled, as Balmacita Gets fouled by Carp on the way to the bucket and he'll go to the line for two. But Coach Jackman wondering where the carry was as losing the handle on his way to the bucket was Jansen Balmacita, second year player out of Vancouver, British Columbia, as Simon Desta checks back in. First free throw, no good from Balmacita, who's normally an 86% free throw shooter. As the second free throw, also no good, but the rebound secured by Desta inside on Goldborn gets it to go. As Xander Wilson waits at the table, if you choose to play down to the small ball, that can be the consequence at times. As Gibbs drives inside, and Goldborn with it now at the top. Goldborn trying to kick it out to Gibbs. It was loose, but Gibbs found it. Trying to work on Desta. Over to Carp. He's got the triple, and it gets it to go. Jordan Carp, who averages 2.8 points per game, already surpassing his average with the three. Galaza. Driving left, stepping back. Using the screen of Valerie. Rolling was Valerie and stolen away by Shallow. Carp has options. Gibbs right up and over. Is that one no good? But Shallow able to secure the offensive rebound. And the Colts will have a second chance. Goldborn three, no good. As the rebound 
was taken by Valerie and Carp landed right on top of him, so that's going to be a foul. It's going to be Carp's second personal. And Wilson will check in for Mars Buckley with the two fouls. Carp will have a seat in favor of Quinn and McCarthy. And timeout's going to be called by the Wolves as there are some things on the offensive end they could be doing better as the Centennial lead now back at seven. Yes, Zach, but again, some tremendous performances from the Wolves to try and keep up with the Colts so far. You know, we're talking about the free throw since they have had a lot of fouls on us alone. Colts now at four team fouls this period. So we're looking at the shooting opportunities given by those fouls and the Wolves are just 50%. So a tad lower than the 66% they usually get in each game. But other than that, the gameplay is looking nice and smooth. Some things that Jackman might be talking to the boys about that he wants to maybe stick to is just the movement. There have been good attacking transitions on how they swing the ball, Zach. So just keeping that in mind as that's how they're going to break down Algonquin. The Colts so far shooting 52% from the field, 38 from deep, 75 from the line. Their last time against Algonquin in that 110 to 62 victory as a team, they shot 56 from the field and 52 from three. So they're right on par with that field goal percentage. And they've also been rather efficient from three at three of eight as they've hit their last couple. Destin inbound and out in transition. Nice feed for Galaza and one. And the look on Jackman's face is what we have at the media table. That was a little unexpected and not the best defensive move there. Letting Galaza out behind. What a feed by Desta to find his receiver on the go route as Shallow will try to cook up a response from the Colts. Shallow out to Goldborn, behind the back, inside, fading away, tough shot, rebound Wilson, goes right back up, and one! So an and one at one end for Galaza, and Xander Wilson responding with an and one of his own. And now he heads the line for a chance at a three-point play. Xander Wilson, 69% on the season from the line. A very good contributor off the bench who's had to start quite a bit this season due to some Colts injuries. But in those 22 minutes per game, averages around eight and a half points and seven rebounds every contest. The and one is short. And with no one in the paint, the rebound was easily secured by the Wolves as now seven foot two Omar Nurse steps up to the table as Coach Jackman's gonna look to take advantage of that incredible height advantage that Nur has over the rest of this Wolves team as the three pointer is no good. Goldborn takes it the other way for Centennial. Driving left in the corner, wide open, shallow for three, no good. Wilson the rebound, good positioning, good footwork on the drop step. Xander Wilson with the easy post bucket. Valerie in the corner, picks up the dribble over to Galaza, works it up top to Desta. Balmasita. Desta, five seconds on the shot clock, working on Gibbs. He's going to have to fade away and does. Doesn't get it to go. Rebound, Goldborn. Gibbs falling away. Nearly gets it to go. 
And Malik Gibbs fouled on the attempt. He'll go to the line for two, and here comes Omar Nur. So Nur will check in for Shallow, and Mongru's going to check out for Peter Jokai. And also returning is Norman for the Wolves. But with Omar Nur in the game at seven foot two, the tallest player currently on the floor is Gazim Peter Jokai at six foot four, so nearly a 10 inch difference, almost a full foot between the short between the tallest players on each team as that's going to be a travel called and Centennial will get the ball on offense and uh, Kira if I could put my money down on any player getting the ball on this possession I think they have to look to get Omar Nur involved yeah I mean when you're 7-2 how are you not getting this rebound here <laughs> Gibbs misses the three and Wilson goes up for it gets fouled hard He's going to spend an extra second down on the floor, but Xander Wilson going to go to the line for two. Looks like he might have jammed that thumb, which he has taped up pretty heavily. Not on the shooting hand. Hopefully the tape job will minimalize the swelling. As Wilson will get a couple free throws here as he sinks the first. And Centennial have their first double-digit lead of the game. Wilson's second free throw goes down. So 2-2 two two trip for Xander. And coming back the other way, Peter Jokai gets the three off. No good. Rebound secured by Gibbs, who's actually... The smallest player on the court at 5'8", so the Colts are both the smallest and tallest player on the floor. As Nur, no one can touch him. Left hand hook, no good. And that one tipped out of bounds by Wilson. As Jackman is telling Omar Nur to look out for that skip pass to the outside as they're gonna look to get as many bodies on Nur as possible. When he gets the ball down in that low block. And that's going to be called a travel. So no block, no charge. Instead, it's going to be a walk. <laughs> and it's going to be a turnover for Algonquin. Centennial will get the ball up 11 with 4.09 left to go in the first half. Yeah, Centennial doing a good job on keeping this lead now 11 ahead here with four on the clock left doing a good job as Goldburn tries to go up for that three but off the rim. Nur not able to secure it. Algonquin will go the other way off the Goldborn miss. DeAndre Goldborn did have 16 points in the loss as that three pointer was good from Norman. He did have 16 points in the loss but only shot five of 20 from the field but that layup's good from DeAndre Goldborn. It's advanced to Norman. Inside, tried to dish it off to Valerie, lost the handle, stolen by Mars Buckley. And the Colts have a three on two in transition. Goldborn would have to retreat, but he was fouled on the reach. It's gonna be called on CJ Galaza. It's gonna be Galaza's second personal, and it's gonna be the third team foul, correction, the fourth team foul against the Wolves. And with a short break in the action as the timeout, we look at our head-to-head -head matchup. It's going to be the two star guards for each of these teams, starting with the first-year Tavon Mars Buckley. And he's been a strong player for the Centennial Colts all season. Had 20 points in that last matchup against the Algonquin Wolves and had 16 points in the loss to Durham. And he shoots a pretty consistent 43.5% from the field and he's matched up today with Simon Desta who's the top scorer for this Wolves team 
on a bit more inefficient shooting, but he does shoot 39% from the land beyond. And that's better than almost every Colts player. But it's a matchup to watch today as both players have been involved early. We'll keep our eye on that as the game goes on. Desto with seven points thus far. Mars Buckley still with nine. So as we exit the timeout, Kira, the Colts have dropped those shooting numbers a little bit, but they've been matching it with some defensive intensity, and they force a few more turnovers here in the second quarter. Yeah, with four steals and two blocks, I mean, we have the numbers as well as the height, and that's really the advantage that, unfortunately, Algonquin uh, doesn't really have when you have Omar Nur on the court standing at 7-2. You have an advantage on these offensive and defensive rebounds, so hopefully we'll see more numbers in those areas. Malik Taylor-Williams, who had to check out with those two fouls, as that's gonna be called a travel on goal board. But Malik Taylor-Williams, who had those two early fouls, checks back in for the first time, as now, Costello, Coach Costello of the Wolves will try to match the height of Nur, bringing in his tallest player, Hunter Holbein, who stands in at 6'9". A lot of height on the floor right now for the Colts between Nur, Taylor Williams, and Goldborn. Desta wide open for three, and the 39% three-point shooter gets another one to go, his second of the game. Gibbs, over to Goldborn. Taylor Williams trying to battle his way away from Normand as Goldborn will take the mid-range and knock it down. Easy little 12-footer there for DeAndre Goldborn and aggressively playing the inbounds as it's advanced. Desta, another look. No good, but no one covering Valerie down low. Swatting away the dunk attempt, DeAndre Goldborn. Trying to go up high, Hunter Holbein. And that was too weak. DeAndre Goldborn sends it away. So off the rejection, it'll remain Algonquin basketball as Illinois Roberts Farkuson will check in for McCarthy. As with 14 seconds on the shot clock, ball's inbounded to Desta, who dishes it off to Ball Masita. Valerie inside, stripped away by Gibbs. Goldborn the other way. He takes it inside himself with the right, gets it to go. Contested shot by Goldborn, but goes right over the smaller defender in Balmasita as it's Holbein who returns it. And it's swung over. Norman already four or five from deep. That one well off. Balmasita gets the offensive rebound. That one off Balmasita's foot. And we're going to have a deliberation on that one because we saw it clear as day from up here at the media table. The call on the floor was to give the ball to Algonquin, and rightly so, it is switched to Centennial Basketball. Yeah, Zach can't really challenge that when the media team has four cameras up and ready with replays going, so not much to deliberate there. Gibbs. Deep three, no good, in and out, rebound. Taylor Williams up strong. Holbein with the contact. Malik Taylor-Williams heading to the line for two. Substitution as Peter Jokai returns in for Valerie. Two free throws coming from Taylor-Williams who hits exactly two-thirds of his free throws. Sudani also at the table ready to check in. Taylor Williams missing the first. 
Yeah, Colts shy from their usual free throw percentile, just averaging 66 from their normal 74. And a timeout's gonna be called by Coach Jackman. So they'll talk things over as the Colts have now built themselves a 12 point lead and that's mostly come off of those transition opportunities. Algonquin already with 11 turnovers in this one. Yes, we have been putting our foot forward when it comes to this lead, Zach, but someone that we still need to watch out for is gonna be Desta as well as Balmacita. Both of them finding success still outside, both on the left and right flanks when it comes to those three pointers. So really making sure our defense are on peak uh, especially when they have all that space, we can't give it to them. Absolutely, also got to look out for Carter Norman, who's four of six from deep in the game. He leads all scorers with 12. Xander Wilson leading the Colts right now with 10. But the Centennial Colts doing an amazing job of taking care of the basketball. Just one turnover so far here in the second corner. Both teams in the bonus for the remainder of the quarter at five team fouls aside. As coming out of the timeout, it will be Algonquin basketball with 139 left to go in the first half. Yes, I will say since Omar Nur and the other bigger players have been having the minutes in the game, the offensive and defensive rebounds have had the advantage, advantage towards the Colts, something that was on the even side earlier in this matchup. Aggressive press from the Colts, able to break it the Wolves. Norman had the three, and he passes it to no one instead. So turnover for the Wolves, and they're gonna say a deflection. So it's gonna remain Algonquin basketball. Now one sent away, Gibbs on the loose ball, chasing him, Balmacita off the backboard! DeAndre Goldborn! What did I just witness, Zach? Madness, straight madness, no communication, Gibbs spots Goldborn, and he rises up for the oop off the backboard. 50 to 36, the Colts lead, step back from Gibbs, no good. That would have blown the roof off the AWC as we take the replay again. Off the loose ball, Gibbs down the floor. Up high for the two-handed jam. But I digress as we enter the last minute of the first half. Roberts Farkison off the turnover the other way. Mars Buckley spinning baseline, travel called first. Forty four point nine to go. As the building still reeling from the oop. As a timeout is called by Algonquin. I'm still in disbelief, Kira. I mean, I'm just in awe. Oh, I think we need another replay. I mean, just look at this, Zach, from getting the ball and just one look behind up and Goldburn's there. That athleticism, his height, it just magical. That's, that's one way to put it. And that's just an infusion of energy for the Colts. Trevor Costello trying to calm that momentum down with this timeout late in the first half. Yeah, Colts up by 14, starting to find success, especially when it comes to attacking, making sure to swing that ball and find those gaps in between Algonquin, as well as doing fast transitional plays like that replay that we just saw between Gibbs and Goldburn. So keeping up and doing that, catching the Wolves off guard is what's going to find the Colts' success here today. Malik Gibbs providing some valuable minutes off the bench today with eight points and three assists, of course, the catalyst of it all. 
the dish off the backboard to DeAndre Goldborn that will have queued up for about every stoppage in this game. As fouling Normand on the press was Roberts Farkusen, so Carter Norman's gonna take a trip to the free throw line for a couple, try to chip away at this centennial lead. As we take one more look as the first free throw is no good and short. I mean, it just gets better every time. Uh, I, I can't get sick of it, Zach. Every time the replay happens, you just see details of it that just keeps getting better and better. As the second free throw from Norman is good, so he splits the attempts, one for two. 40 seconds to go, first half. Gibbs bringing the ball up. Goldborn inside. Taylor Williams spins, goes up. That one sent away. And off the hands of Sudani, good defense there from Hunter. Holbein picks up the block. So 30 seconds left on the clock, six second differential, game clock and shot clock. Ball Masita over to Desta. Trying to go inside with the right, no good. It was in and out of Taylor Williams' hands. Holbein can't get a handle, now he does. Goes up with the right, no good, ball still loose. Desta gets it again. Desta, a short jumper, gets that one to go. With five seconds and the clock running, DeAndre Goldborn will try to get a look. Two seconds, one second, running three! Just short from our angle.
Make some noise for it, everybody. We got the second half action coming your way for another minute of time.
Start of the second half coming up in about two minutes' time as we welcome you back to Colts Net Live. Zachary Freeman, Kira Irison. The Colts with an 11 point lead. 50 to 39 the score. And if you missed the first half, then you missed one heck of a play as we're going to pull it up one more time as Malik Gibbs and DeAndre Goldborn off the steal combine for the finest play of the Colts season. An alley-oop off the backboard for the emotional gut punch as we're about a minute away from the start of the second half and Kira, the Colts, what seemed like a bit of a dicey first quarter reasserted the dominance in the second quarter. Yes, I would say the same thing, Zach. At the start of the first half, we did have a little bit of a rough start against Algonquin. They did have a little bit of a, a lead, especially when you have Desta hitting those back-to-back -back threes that gave them that six-point lead. But something that Jackman, Coach Jackman, wanted to work on was how to bring the intensity to lower level teams. So making sure that even though they lost against Durham, they're keeping up that consistency. And we do see that tonight, especially after that replay between Gibbs and Goldburn. Plays like those, Zach, is the reason why the Colts are just finding so much success here today. So hopefully in this second half, we can find more of that. The Centennial Colts in their final homestand of the season. The men's team will take on the La Cité Yotes tomorrow afternoon at 3 o'clock right here on ColtsNet Live. That'll be the final home game of the regular season. But if this Centennial Colts is, team has shown us anything over the course of the season, it's that they have the potential to make a very deep playoff push. Yes, a very deep playoff push indeed. They've only had really two teams to struggle against this season. So hopefully with these last few games in the season, they're able to close that out nice. So both teams rolling with their starting fives as CJ Galaza pulls the first shot of the second half. No good. Malik Taylor-Williams missing the rebound, but it was taken by Xander Wilson. And now it's shallow in the corner for Mars Buckley. Spins away in the middle for Taylor Williams, trying to dish it off to Xander Wilson, but that one just a little too far out in front as it's out of bounds and it's Algonquin basketball. Centennial coming out with their man press once again as Desta gives it off to Partington. Norman dishes it off to Valerie, who gives it off to Galaza. Step back from the baseline, no good. Battling Wilson for the rebound was Partington. As a foul is called, I believe it's going to go against the Colts. And it's going to go against Xander Wilson. Yeah, Jackman just a little upset on that call. On the inbounds, Partington. Norman for three. That one doesn't go. Norman had four three-pointers in the first half. The ball rattled around and eventually putting in the putback, Carter Norman. Fifty forty one Centennial leads. Goldborn. Mars Buckley thought about it. Step back. Now goes for it. That one goes down. So despite the hesitation, Tavon Mars Buckley able to knock down the three. Inside for Partington. Norman, he's going to pull it. No good. Rebound Wilson. Taylor Williams advancing. Lost the dribble. Galaza the other way. Euro step. Taylor Williams on the chase down. In the corner, Mars Buckley for three. What a turn of events. Taylor Williams on one end, Mars Buckley on the other. And that's a five point swing for the Centennial Colts. 
Desta responds with a triple of his own, brings it back to 11. Some incredible displays of athleticism today from the Centennial Colts. Goldborn with a block and a slam on the oop. And Taylor Williams smacking that one off the glass as Mars Buckley again! That was a good find there by Shallow. Partington getting inside. And Taylor Williams going down awkwardly. Looks to be okay, but a foul is called on the Colts. Foul's gonna be called on Taylor Williams. That's gonna be his third. Galaza. Norman pulling again, and he's just starting to chuck now after an electric first half, but he gets his own miss and puts it up and in for two. Yeah, Norman as well as Desta have been both leaders in the overall game, 15 points apiece to their name, so really on the scoreboard here today. Goldborn, foul line jumper, no good. Rebound Taylor Williams inside, stripped away by Norman. And they have numbers going the other way. Galaza up and under, gets fouled, trying to put the spin on that scoop attempt. And CJ Galaza will get a pair of free throws as Sudani checks in for Taylor Williams. The foul on Shallow. First free throw, no good by CJ Galaza, who on the season, an 82% free throw shooter, one of two from the line this afternoon. Second free throw, no good. Rebound Sudani, punched away by Valerie, but Goldborn able to secure the loose ball using the screen of Wilson. A little shimmy around Partington, gets by Valerie, and a little blow by for the easy two. Desta with a blow by of his own with the left up and in. Game starting to open up as shallow with some speed. Mars Buckley, and he gets hit. And that's going to be a foul called on the baseline, so it's going to be Centennial Basketball, 18 seconds on the shot clock. Foul is on Galaza, his third. As looked like maybe a little extracurriculars there. Ref's gonna calm everything down and we'll get back to basketball. Shallow to inbound. And they run it all the way around. They looked inside to Sudani. They had Goldborn open for the three, and Goldborn not pleased about the choice by Shallow. Flying by as Partington going up. Nearly gets the putback. Riley Partington at just six feet. Trying to end the Colts' lives. Yeah, he had some hops there. Are, are we playing basketball or volleyball here tonight, Zach? Because... That was at least one meter. <laughs> so off the loose ball foul, it is Colts basketball, and Goldborn works with it behind the back. Dribbling, staying with it. Gets it to go on the tough shot. Plenty of contact there from Balmacita. But DeAndre Goldborn just too strong. Norman inside with the left, gets it to go. Colts still up 12, five and a half left to go in the third quarter. Mars Buckley lost the handle and had tried to get through, but they're gonna call a reach on Norman and a technical foul is gonna be called on Simon Desta. So 
So Norman picks up his second personal. Desta picks up the technical. And Mars Buckley will shoot the technical for the Colts. And they will get the ball right after. Mm. As checking in for the first time is Tayshawn Crawford. Crawford, who's been a pretty mainstay starter for most of the season, is going to see his first action with 5.15 left to go in the third quarter. Yeah, the second year is one of the anchors of the team. Had an amazing first year with the Colts. Was rookie of the year. So second year on the court, looking nice. Hopefully we'll see some good action from him. Shallow to inbound. Shallow already with seven assists in the contest as it's Goldborn. Slicing, dicing, short on the floater. Partington sends Shallow away. Is the foul going to be on Partington or is it going to be on Shallow? As there was a lot of contact by both parties on the collision. But it is called on Partington, his second personal. So Centennial will get the basketball. And they're going to discuss it, actually. As I thought maybe Shallow got there first and caused the contact, and then Partington, as a reaction, shoved away. We'll see what the decision comes to with 5.06 to go in the third. The call is going to stand on the floor. Foul goes on Partington, Centennial basketball. Mars Buckley, the three, no good. Partington with some speed starts to go the other way and he's gonna go right into the defense and Shallow secures the rebound. He's fouled on the way down by Kendall Valerie. And with the Colts in the bonus, Centennial will go to the free throw line. Yes, there's been a lot of assertiveness and aggressiveness in this quarter. Looks as though Algonquin has already had five team fouls and there is less than four, five minutes to go in this quarter. So not looking too good for them as that could be an easy opportunity for the Colts to further extend this lead. Shallow today, one of one from the line. A full stat sheet now with 6.6 .6 rebounds and seven assists as he hits the first of two. Shallow hits the second. So this lead at 15 now for the Colts, their biggest of the game. Ball Masita guarded by Crawford, retreats, baseline jumper no good. Partington aggressively going for the rebound. Hits it off Sudani. And it remains Algonquin basketball. And checking back in, Mateo Mongru for his first look of the second half. He checks in for Valerie. Stripped away by Goldborn, turnover by the Wolves. Goldborn with the floater gets it to go. Rising up over the 5'11", Desta. Desta swings it to Norman, keeping his balance. Fading away, double clutch, no good. Goldborn tips it to Shallow, advances it to Mars Buckley with the left, no good, Sudani rebound. Easy layup for two. 19 points, the Colts now lead, Ball Masita. Skips it to Norman. That one might have been deflected by Shallow, it's short. And it's gonna stay with Algonquin as that one was stripped away from Partington. And now stepping to the table for the first time is Tristan Ball Masita. And he's going to check in for Carter Norman. Is 
Desta with the three, that one short. Rebound secured by Shallow. Mars Buckley in the corner. No good, Sudani, great rebound. And he puts it back up. He's fouled by Partington and he gets a trip to the charity stripe. Partington a little shaken up, fell awkwardly trying to box out Sudani. But Abdul Sudani with six rebounds now hits the first. Colts currently with a plus 10 advantage in the rebounding. The Algonquin Wolves with just six defensive rebounds in the game. It's Desta gives it back to Jansen Balmasita who returns it for Desta, thought about the three. Balmasita battling through Mars Buckley and they're gonna call that on the floor. So it's gonna be side out of bounds. That was the Colts' last foul to give with 3.14 left to go in the third quarter as they're up 71 to 50. Yeah, 21 points ahead, Zach. Things are looking better than the first half. Things were a lot closer between the Wolves and Centennial, so good thing for Jackman to recognize the faults that are happening in the Algonquin Wolves and find those breakdowns. Desta had a strong finish as Goldborn tried the transition three. No good. Rebound taken by Balmasita. Mongru. Balmasita to Balmasita. And the three is good for Jansen on the feed from Tristan. Goldborn whips it to Crawford in the corner. He goes up high. And that's going to be called an offensive foul. Doing a good job to set his feet there, Tristan Balmasita. So a little 5-0 run here for the Wolves have brought it down to 16. With two and a half left to go in the third. Jansen Balmasita for Desta. Long three-pointer, no good. Rebound taken by Shallow. That's Shallow's ninth rebound of the game in the corner for Mars Buckley. That is his third three-pointer of the quarter. He is four of eight from deep, and he has 21 in the game. As that one easily sent away by Shallow. Ball stays with the Wolves as Peter Jokai checks back in for Algonquin. And Valerie is also going to return. And he's going to check in for Mongru. Nice play by Crawford to step into the lane and sent it away with some authority. Up top for Tristan Balmasita inside with the left, trying to get it to go. Rebound taken by Sudani. In the corner, one more time! Tavon Mars Buckley's on a heater! And he does a little smiling celebration, and that's how you do it. Round of applause for him. He's clapping on the court. All of the successful shots, Zach. Ironically, in that exact same position. DeAndre Goldborn with the foul there as Jansen Balmasita goes to the line for two. Missed the first, 
as the Wolves trail by 22 after a pair of Mars Buckley threes. Second one up and in. Mars Buckley leads all scorers with 24. Goldborn asking for the screen from Sudani, but he pulls the three, no good. Long rebound, Ball Masita. Driving left. Double teamed in the corner, nice pass inside for Valerie. And that's gonna be a foul, and that's gonna count after the release as Desta hits the three-pointer. Falling to the floor was, I believe, Kendall Valerie. As the loose ball foul, I believe, is on Sudani. That's his second personal foul. And with a chance for a four-point play, Kendall Valerie. Free throw is good. As they're actually going to rule Kira, they got two free throws on that one despite the made three pointer. But the second one was no good, anyways. Yeah, a little confused on that. No one on the court seems phased by it. Phased by <laughs> it, so I'm going to say yes. As Mars Buckley with under a minute to go. Trying to work inside, he's feeling it. Kicks it out to Goldborn. Trying his luck from the Mars Buckley corner. It hits the rim, so off the rebound. Sudani tried the three from the opposite corner. Couldn't get it to go. Peter Jokai lost the handle. Gets it back. Gives it off to Desta. Inside, stolen by Sudani. Way to flash from the weak side and block the lane as there's about a two and a half second, second differential between the game clock and shot clock, as it looks like the Colts are just gonna hold on for the final shot of the third. Shallow, driving inside, up high! Goldborn unable to get it to go. Didn't have a clean lane to the bucket, but if he did, that would have been the second alley-oop of the game between the shallow goal worn connection. So it tips off of a Algonquin Wolves, so with 4.8 seconds left, Goldborn's gonna pull from the corner. No good. Rebound ball, Masita, and that will end the third. As the Centennial Colts with a strong showing, spearheaded by Tavon Mars Buckley. And his four three-pointers in the third, leading all scores with 24. Colts lead by 17. Yeah, Zach, not much to work on heading into this fourth quarter besides keeping the energy and what they're doing up. I mean, Algonquin struggling to close this gap, you know, despite the fact that they did have a close start between the Colts, kind of making us shaking our boots a little, especially when they had those three-pointers and those early leads. But when you have bodies and height to your advantage, that's when Coach Jackman really utilizes those opportunities, like utilizing Nur when they need to, and then bringing in Mars Buckley when the energy is low. I think overall it's been in a tremendous you know, final home game for the Colts and a really good show out to try and get uh, home home turf advantage for these playoff games. So the Colts only with nine turnovers through the first three quarters and they lead in just about every category plus 10 on the glass. And that includes 13 offensive rebounds which have led to a good chunk of second chance opportunities and for the most part, when they get those looks, the Colts don't miss twice. 
Yeah, the Colts aren't missing twice. I mean, I wish we could put this on again, but just an example earlier on this game was between Gibbs and Goldburn. Not missing those opportunities and taking those advantages is what the Colts have been doing tremendous this game. So heading into this fourth quarter, keeping that energy up and closing it out will be the main goal. We gotta send that one into House of Highlights. It was that good. Oh yeah. As we get set for the fourth quarter. I think it needs to be on ESPN. I don't know, like top, <laughs> top sporting. The top 10? Yeah, top 10 of all time. Of all time? <laughs> okay, no, of all time. You know, player of the week. <laughs> Top plays of all time. Yes, ESPN <laughs> from Bristol, Connecticut with our top Ontario college play of the week as Goldborn drives it inside. Doesn't get it to go, but he's fouled and goes to the line for two. So DeAndre Goldborn heads to the line, a 71% free throw shooter on the year. Averages right around 20 points per game. Top five in the OC AA. Also on the defensive end, incredibly active with nearly three steals a game as the second one rattles in and out. So he splits the attempts and it'll be Jansen Balmacita the other way. It's Desta inside, kicks it out. Tristan Balmacita, that one goes long. Tipped away from Taylor Williams, secured by Shallow for Mars Buckley. No good. As inside, Desta gets the nice roll off the front of the rim on the floater. Goldborn. Shallow with 10 on the shot clock. He chooses to pull. That one in and out. Peter Jokai the rebound. Desta works it the other way. Desta has been proving himself this game. 24 points overall, averaging more than his 15.7 points per game. Taylor Williams tried to follow the layup as DeAndre Goldborn getting up slowly after... Flying high. I think he went up with the intent to dunk. I think he might have slipped a little. He did not get the vert he needed. Still tried to lay it in. And the ref stopping play as Goldborn was getting up slowly. We'll see what the conversation leads to. It's going to be Colts ball on the outside with eight seconds on the shot clock. And it's inbounded to Goldborn. And a foul is going to be called. That's going to be on Nestor Vaval. The third year guard seeing his first action of the game. So a fresh 14 off the foul for the Colts and it's shallow. Using the screen of Taylor Williams, gets the switch, working on Peter Jokai. Now it's Mars Buckley inside for Taylor Williams. Trying to go inside and a travel's called. As Jackman thinks he kept that pivot foot down. And checking in is gonna be Hans in Kogo, in Kogo. As fouled hard there was Mars Buckley. And so it's gonna go the other way. Foul going on Peter Jokai. And it's Centennial basketball with eight minutes left to go. Colts up 16. 
Colts up 16, and Algonquin already having three team fouls to their name. We talked earlier about how, wow! What a play there by Crawford! Crawford driving right through the defense once he found himself open as once again, Desta always finding a way to respond after the Crawford slam, Shallow was grabbed all the way down by Nkogo. So now the fourth team foul. So next foul brings the Colts into the bonus. As CJ Galaza checks back in for Algonquin. And a timeout's gonna be taken by Algonquin. Four fouls and there is 7.33 on the clock. I mean, when you're getting these early fouls and putting a team that's known for good shooting at the line, having average 74% when having their free throw opportunities, that's something that you don't want, want to really put in the hands of Colts. So hopefully, you know, the Algonquin Wolves are able to kind of settle that restlessness when it comes to those defensive moves or else the Colts will really take advantage when heading to the line. Desta now with 27, surpasses Mars Buckley for the game high. Mars Buckley still at 24. Desta 5 of 11 from deep. Carter Norman also shooting well from deep at 4 of 11. He's got 19, but he's definitely cooled off from that first quarter that saw him hit 4 of 6. So we exit the timeout with a 15 point lead for Centennial. And of course those four team fouls looming over Algonquin. And it could mean a lot of free throws late for Centennial. Shallow. Trying to run the two man game with Taylor Williams. He gets it to him. The offensive rebounds tip to Shallow who gets the second chance opportunity, and Algonquin wants to run with some pace here, but got to slow down because of the press. And that one's stolen away by Crawford. Down the lane, once again, the two-hand slam. And that is the energy you have to bring to the court. Crawford shows nothing less. Crawford battling Vival down low as it's Desta. Gets it over to Balmacita, long three-pointer, no good, long rebound, out of bounds, Centennial basketball. Peter Jokai returns for the Wolves, checking in for Desta, who's gonna take a seat in what's been an incredible game for the senior out of Ottawa. Goldborn crosses the timeline, makes his way inside, backdoor feed for Crawford, loose ball. Eventually Crawford gets it back. Mars Buckley working on Peter Jokai with the spin, no good. Tipped out by Taylor Williams, secured by Mars Buckley. Shallow, Taylor Williams gets fouled hard by Peter Jokai. And Malik Taylor-Williams will head to the line for two free throws. That is the third personal on Peter Jokai, the fifth team foul. Taylor-Williams, one of two from the line in the game, hits the first, and the lead is back at 20. Yeah, Taylor Williams has had a good show out so far this, this game. Four points now with two rebounds and two assists. Now five, so overall doing really good for, for himself attacking-wise. Partington returns for Peter Jokai. As Galaza will bring the ball up the floor. And he's got a lane and chooses to take the jumper. It was blocked by Taylor Williams. Galaza 
Now working on Crawford once again, stepping back, gets the tough follow away jumper to go. Shallow for Crawford. In for Taylor Williams. Swings it over to Goldborn, checked his feet, now drives inside, out to Mars Buckley. Jumper short, Shallow stepping on the line, coming down with it. Shallow on triple-double watch with nine points, 11 rebounds, and eight assists. Just a reminder, Hussam Shallow only standing at 5'10", leading this Centennial team in rebounding. Crawford swings it to Goldborn, who steps back for three, gets it to go. DeAndre Goldborn, after seven misses from deep, finally gets one to fall. Galaza thought about pulling it, now gets it inside for Partington. Spins around shallow for the easy layup. 89-69, five minutes to go, fourth quarter. Goldborn with it. Retreat, step back, one more time! DeAndre Goldborn's got his mojo back! And he kind of shimmies after that one, but way to put two back-to-backs. Rebound Goldborn off the miss, shallow, going the other way, in the corner, gets the man to miss! No good from Mars Buckley. Goldborn out to shallow, back to Goldborn. Heat check coming, shakes and bakes. Nice feed inside to Taylor Williams. Gets the foul. The crowd's going crazy as DeAndre Goldborn is feeling himself right now, doing whatever he wants here at the AWC. And now those stars today for the Centennial Colts, much to the Chagrin of Colts Nation in attendance. Goldborn, Shallow, and Mars Buckley will take seats for most likely the rest of the game as Taylor Williams hitting the first free throw extends the lead to 24. Yeah, good show out from the three. All of them did an amazing job on just finding movements and breakdowns within the Algonquin defense to break on those laneways and just bringing the energy. I mean, we I still can't talk about the Goldborn and Gibbs movement there as McCarthy gets hit down hard. Partington may be small, but he's a thick guy. And when you collide with him, you go down hard. And that's exactly what happened to Quinn and McCarthy there as he picks up the foul and, uh, and Partington will have a chance at a three point play. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about how Hussam Shallow is one of the smallest players on the team but has the most rebounds for the Colts. I think Partington is utilizing his body probably one of the best players on the court beside Desta. Taylor Williams. Guarded heavily by Partington in the corner. Gibbs for three, no good. Taylor Williams turning around and celebrating already. He's laughing at the other end of the court as going the other way in Kogo. And deep three, CJ Galaza. And a timeout's gonna be called by Coach Michael Jackman. Never mind, it's an inadvertent buzzer. Yeah, no, Coach Jackman's putting his hands in the air like, I called a timeout. So the timeout will come. As he'll talk things over, wants to get some good minutes out of his reserves, going to go over some systems most likely. As the unit on the bench, looking like McCarthy, Gibbs, Carp, Taylor Williams, and I believe Illinois Roberts Farkuson is the fifth man on the bench. He is. Yeah. 
So Colts up 19. With a steady lead. As Centennial will most likely be advanced, improving, I should say, to 11 and four on the season, which gets them back in that potential second place conversation, which would be huge come the cross divisional play, having to take on a seven as opposed to a six from the Western Conference. The Colts today with two 20 point scorers with Tavon Mars Buckley and DeAndre Goldborn. So it's a full reserve unit in, aside from Taylor Williams, who got the start today. As Farkasin gets a little aggressive there, him and Galaza get into it. As he kind of threw Galaza down over, so. So the foul on Illinois Roberts Farkusen. And a technical foul is going to be called on Roberts Farkusen after the foul call. And now heading to the scorer's table is Tayshawn Crawford. And he's gonna check in for Roberts Farkuson after picking up the tee. So shooting the technical three throw will be Jansen Balmacita, who on the season has hit 86% of his opportunities as the refs are gonna have a conversation. Not sure if it's regarding the shot clock. After the foul, as it's just gonna be a 14 second reset instead of a 24. But we will now have, after a long period of time, finally, the technical free throw which does not go down. So Algonquin will take the inbounds. It's gonna be Vaval. He inbounds to Galaza with three and a half to go. As that one no good, Gibbs tips it over to McCarthy. Gibbs gets the handle back, still keeps dribbling through and he's fouled. That time by Hans and Kogo. The third year guard not too thrilled as now Gibbs goes to the line for a couple of free throws. Just a reminder, Colts Net Live will be back on air tomorrow afternoon at around three o'clock as the Centennial Colts team will take on the other Ottawa College in the La Cité Yotes in the second half of a back-to-back -back for their final home game of the regular season. And you better expect that Centennial will be hosting a playoff game once the postseason gets underway in just a few weeks. Partington driving inside hard for Nkogo in the corner. Back out, Balmacita. Galaza, he's gonna try again, no good. Long rebound secured by Nkogo inside for Partington, trying to body Taylor Williams, snatching it out of the air! Carp the other way, kicking it out, and he's fouled hard by Partington. As we take another look at that block as he just takes it away, and Carp is down and he is hurt bad holding his head. Yeah, Taylor Taylor Williams on that last play though, almost cradles it as he snatches it. Has been doing tremendous when it comes to the defensive side for the Colts, using that height 
And it's Hops to his advantage. Down at the corner, hopefully Harp Carp is okay. That was a pretty hard fall, Zach. Sounded to be really hard. Made a lot of contact, so. And of course, you just have to think, did the head make contact with the floor as Carp gets off? Will walk off on his own power after getting checked out by the medical staff. So two free throws, two free throws are gonna come here for the Colts. And Hussam Shallow is gonna check in in his stead. Coach Jack knowing he's got a, got a chance at that triple-double. Shallow needing one point and two more assists to secure the feat. He'll go to the line for Carp's two shots. Shallow makes the first. Second free throw good for Shallow. 11 points. Now for Hussam as Galaza works it the other way. Partington, that fake move inside, takes the elbow jumper, no good. Rebound Taylor Williams, outlet pass to Crawford, advances it to Shallow. Gibbs, inside, McCarthy for three. That one goes down. Quinn and McCarthy with his first bucket late in the fourth, and that sends the Colts into triple digits. 100 to 75, they lead. Trying to repeat history, if not surpass it. Last time Colts played the Wolves, they had victory 110 to 62. With 232 on the clock, Zach, do you think we can bang out 10? Seems more than likely, yeah. I would say. Definitely in the realm of possibility as checking in for the first time, Arian Arfaga Castro gets it over to Nkogo. Up top, Valet. Balmacita in the corner for Castro. No good. Well short. Quinton McCarthy with the rebound. Crawford lobbing it up to no one, but it goes to Gibbs who kicks it out. McCarthy trying again, gets it to go. So the first year gets two three-pointers late, 103-75. As Carp's back at the table, that's a good sign to see as Castro's got it on the far side, kicks it out. Valet. Correction, Vival. As Gibbs takes it the other way. Guarded by Castro, shallow for McCarthy. He's going to try again. Oh, my gosh, Zach. Look at this replay. Every single play that McCarthy has had at that exact right point at the three-point line, he's just banged it in. That also, Hussam Shallow's ninth assist of the game. And he knows it too. He's getting subbed out for Carp. Oh, Shallow knows it, stretches out his arms. Why? As the Centennial Colts been in the kitchen all night long, they've been cooking from three point range as they now lead by 31. As this one is just about under wraps. Yes, yeah, some pretty impressive shooting from the Colts at the three-point range. Now averaging 38% at the three-point line, more than their season average, which is just around 30%. So looking real nice. We've had a lot of good plays at that three-point line from Mars Buckley and now McCarthy. A few little shimmy shakes from Goldburn there. So some really good plays there. So coming out of the timeout, Shallow does return to the floor. He's got a minute 16 to try and rack up that 10th assist. As 
with the 31 point lead. It's gonna be Algonquin basketball. So Centennial giving their starters a good rest for tomorrow with the big lead as Vival unable to get it to go. That one in and out of Karp's hands. Ball stays with Algonquin. Karp not too pleased. As we have two Wolves prepared to inbound, but it's gonna be Ball Masita. Vival whips it over. Castro for three. That one no good. Vival saves it. Carp gets the rebound. And Carp gets fouled. Yeah. So Jordan Carp's gonna go to the line for two free throws. Yeah. Usan Shallow looking a little antsy here. Really wanting that 10th assist to close out you an see, amazing see he's, hide, he's hiding a smirk. Oh yeah. Carp's first free throw, no good. Exactly one minute left to go. Second free throw goes down. All eyes will be on Hussam Shallow should the Colts get the ball back. Vaval, he's gonna pull the three. No good, long rebound. Shallow takes it the other way, looking for the pass to Carp with the left. Oh, he doesn't get it to go. Long pass for Balmasita the other way. Inside, gets it to go. So one more chance for Hussam Shallow to rack up the 10th assist. Inside, Taylor Williams gets it to go. And everyone on the Colts bench up and celebrating as Hussam Shallow with the 10th assist records the triple-double. An incredible showing from the guard as now with that rebound, that'll just about end it once Shallow crosses center. As now with eight seconds to go, Gibbs is just gonna hold on and dish it off one more time as we hit triple zeros. And the Centennial Colts on the first half of a back-to-back -back easily take this one. 109 to 77, just barely missing that 110 threshold from their last matchup against the Wolves. And Kira, Centennial, once they figured it out, they really did not look back. Yes, I mean, you know, we, we were having a little bit of cold feet at the start of this game. Algonquin gave us something to worry about but not to free, we kind of got into it heading into the third quarter, and that's when we saw Mars Buckley banging those threes on the right. So just an amazing performance. Hopefully they'll be able to bring up that energy tomorrow here again around 3 p.m. against La Cite. Absolutely, and when you look at the stats, it was all about those it was honestly, it was a real full team effort for the Colts as they finished plus 25 in bench points and in the paint dominated plus 18, but the Centennial Colts really doing it all. Mars Buckley and Goldborn leading the way, combining for 45 points, but it's a 109 to 77 victory as the Colts will look to do it all again tomorrow right here on ColtsNet Live. Once again, I'm Zachary Friedman, along with Kira Irison for our producer, Leo Solarsano, and our entire Centennial Sports Media team. Colts win. We'll see you tomorrow.